you have just created a bunch of VMs. But now manually logging into each one to install packages, tweak configs, deploy services? That's the part no one enjoys. This is where Ansible steps in. It automates everything from updating systems to deploying full environments across all your VMs in one go. But if you've ever tried getting started with Ansible, you know, it can be a bit tricky. Dealing with inventory files, setting up SSH, fixing errors, it can get overwhelming. So in this video, we're keeping it simple. I'll show you how to run Ansible inside a Docker container. No complicated setup, just straightforward automation that works on any machine every time. We're building on the Proxmox VMs we cloned in the last video using Terraform. And by the end of this one, you'll have a fully working Ansible setup that's ready to scale. This is part of a bigger series where we automate VM provisioning and configuration, and we might even integrate it into a CI-CD pipeline in future. And running Ansible in Docker? That's the trick to make sure it works seamlessly on any machine, every time. Let's get started. Alright, so here's the setup. I'm working with an Ubuntu server template, and I've already made sure the KMU guest agent is installed. This way, we can easily fetch the VM's IP address without having to log into it. From this template, I've spun up four virtual machines to work with. One of them is going to be used to run Ansible inside a Docker container, and the other three will be our target machines that we'll manage with Ansible. So first, let's start the VM that will run Ansible. We'll just give it a moment for the IP address to show up. And there it is, 192.168.0.166. Let's go ahead and SSH into it. I'm opening up VS Code and connecting directly to that IP. I really like using VS Code for this because it gives us a nice visual of the file structure right on the side panel. I'll just close out this welcome tab, then open up a new terminal down here at the bottom. Right now we're in the home directory. And as you can see, it's totally empty. So let's create a new directory for our Ansible setup. Once that's created, I'll CD into it. Actually, let's make it even easier. Let's open this folder directly in VS Code. It'll help keep everything organized as we build out the automation. Now, before we dive into Ansible, we need to tell it which systems to manage. And we do that with something called an inventory file. Let's set that up first. So, I'll quickly create a new file and name it inventory.yml. This file will store the IP addresses of all the machines we want Ansible to manage. Now, let's boot up the systems we'll be using for this demo. All three VMs are up and running, so let's start setting up the inventory file. First, I'll define a group called prod, so I'll type prod colon, and under that, hosts colon. Then I'll add the first machine, prod1 colon, and right below that, I'll type ansible underscore host colon followed by its IP address, which we can find in the summary tab on Proxmox. We'll grab this IP address from Proxmox and add it directly into the inventory file. Now, instead of typing everything from scratch again, I'll just copy this whole prod1 block and paste it twice. For the second block, I'll quickly change prod1 to prod2, jump back to Proxmox, check the IP for prod2, and update it here. Same thing for the third one. I'll rename prod1 to prod3, check the IP address for prod3, and update it as well. Now all three machines are listed with their correct IP addresses, and our inventory file is ready for Ansible to use. Now let's take a moment to understand what we just did. We created a group for Ansible to manage, and we named that group prod. Inside this group, we added a section called Hosts, which is where we list all the systems Ansible should work with. Under Hosts, we've added our group members, Prod1, Prod2, and Prod3. For each of these, we've used a tag called Ansible underscore host, which is a reserved Ansible keyword used to specify the IP address of the machine. So essentially, we've declared the IP addresses for each of our hosts, making it clear to Ansible which systems it needs to connect to and manage. Now let's get our Docker container ready for Ansible. Docker is already installed on my machine, and if you're following along, make sure it's installed on your system too, before we move forward. We will start by creating a Docker file. Since Ansible is written in Python, we will base our container on a Python image. So I will type out from Python colon to begin. 
But instead of grabbing the latest version, which can sometimes break things down the road, we're going to pick a specific one to keep things stable. To do that, let's head over to Docker Hub and search for Python. From the search results, we will open the official Python image. Right now, the latest release is Python 3.14, but for this setup, I'm going with version 3.13.3. .3. To keep the image size minimal, we will go with the Alpine variant. For version 3.13.3, .3, this is the latest Alpine image available. Let's copy this tag and paste it into our Docker file. Next, we will install Ansible using pip. I will type run pip install no cache dir Ansible. This makes sure we don't keep any unnecessary files in the image. But just like with Python, we don't want to rely on the latest version, so let's lock it down. We will head over to Google, search pip install Ansible, and click on the PyPI link. At the top, you will see the latest stable version available. We can also explore the version history and select the one we need. In this case, we'll go with Ansible version 11.5.0. Now, back in the Docker file, I'll add equals equals 11.5.0 right after Ansible in the pip install command. Now, one last step, we need a few extra tools inside the container. Since we're using Alpine, we will use apk add with a no cache flag to keep it clean. I will install curl, open SSH client, and SSH pass. And with that, we should be able to run Ansible and connect to other VMs successfully. So that's all we need to do in the Docker file. Now I'm setting up the docker compose.yml file to run Ansible inside a container. Under services, I'm defining a service called Ansible. For the build, I'm using a dot which tells Docker to look for the Docker file in the current directory. I'm also giving the container a name, so it's easy to reference later. Next, I'll define an image name. You can use any name here as this tells Docker what the image should be tagged as once it's built. Now our Ansible Docker container will need access to our inventory file and also other files which we will create later. So let's map our local project folder to the container by using the volumes tag. I'll type dot slash Ansible. This maps the current directory on my host to the slash Ansible directory inside the container. That way, anything I change in my local project folder stays in sync with what's inside the container. Then I define the working directory as slash Ansible, so every command we run in the container will start from there by default. For the entry point, I'm using bin slash sh with a dash c flag. This lets us run shell commands inside the container. Then for the command, I'm using tail dash f slash dev slash null. This just keeps the container running in the background without exiting so I can exec into it whenever I need to run Ansible commands. Now, I'll create a new file and name it run.sh. Using this script, I'm going to automate the entire Ansible workflow, so I don't have to manually start the container and run commands every single time. Inside this script, I'll first type docker compose up dash d. This command will start our Ansible container in the background using the docker compose file. At the end of the script, I'll also add docker compose down this ensures that the container and any associated networks are shut down once we're done. Now, to actually run Ansible, we need to execute commands inside the running container. For that, we'll use docker exec it Ansible. Ansible here is the name of our container. Whatever we type after that will be interpreted as the actual Ansible command. We'll have to start with the word Ansible. Right after that, I'll type all. This tells Ansible to target all the hosts in our inventory. Then I'll add dash m ping, which uses the ping module to check if everything's reachable. And finally, dash i followed by the name of our inventory file, where all our target machine details are defined. But before we run that, we need to set up a few things in the inventory file. Let's open it up. We've already defined the hosts and their IP addresses. Now inside the prod group, we can add a vars section to define some common settings for all the machines. I'll start with Ansible host key, checking and set it to false, this turns off that prompt when connecting to new hosts. Next is Ansible user set to tech, which is the username Ansible will use to log in. And finally, Ansible password, which I'm setting to my password. 
This allows Ansible to authenticate using a password instead of SSH keys. With just these three lines, we now have a basic login setup that's easy to test. Sure, it's not the most secure method for handling credentials, but for now, it keeps things simple and gets us up and running without any manual steps. Now let's switch over to the terminal. First, I'll make the script executable by typing chmod plus x run.sh. Then to run the script, we type dot slash run.sh. As soon as we do that, Docker starts building the image. Once the build is complete, it launches the container and the script proceeds to run the Ansible ping command against all our targets. And there it is, we get a successful Pong response from each of the virtual machines, confirming that Ansible was able to connect and communicate properly. Once everything is done, the script shuts down the container automatically. So we just ran Ansible inside a Docker container and it successfully reached and pinged all our selected hosts on the network. That's a solid start. If you found this helpful, Check out the next video where we dive into hands-on configuration with Ansible for real-world use. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to follow along with the full series.